Thank you so much for having us. Is that loud? Um, but we, I, we're, we're thrilled to be back. I, you know, we were here, not us specifically, but Brittany's Hope was here a few years ago, so we, you know, thrilled to be back. Um, congratulations again on the golf tournament. We had, uh, of course, our corporate sponsor is the one that, that put the sponsorship through, so we were delighted to be on the sixth hole. And then as well, some of our sponsors uh, were able to play guys that play golf all the time and said it was the very best golf tournament they've ever been at. So, you know, thank you, and you know, you, you all did a great job. So, so yeah, are we, yeah, we, let's look into it, okay. <laughs> okay, cool, okay. Um, we're, we're, we're working it out, so. <laughs> so, Brittany's Hope, um, you, you may be familiar with it, we're right down on Market Street. Um, you know, hopefully you, you've heard something about it, but you know, with all the good, wonderful causes there are in the area, you know, sometimes I think we lose sight of exactly what's going on, like right, just right here. So we're at 1160 North Market Street. Um, we started in the year 2000. Uh, you may remember the story of Brittany if you've been around for a while, but Brittany is uh, the oldest adopted daughter from the Abel family. She was killed in a car crash. Uh, she was working at DAS, the company that they own, and uh, she was working there on her way back to college, decided to run out and get donuts for uh, her coworkers before she went back to college and she was killed in a car crash. So, of course, in, you know, in that type of situation, everyone's like, what can we do, what can we do? And, um, and they said, well, her, she always said every child deserves a home because she was adopted and she said, you know, there's, there should be a home for every child. So that's how, that's how Brittany's Hope was started. And really with the first goal was the, uh, was to provide um, adoption grants to children with special needs. I don't want to get ahead of my, oh, I should do the mission. Do you want to do the mission? Okay, I can't see very well. Okay, <laughs> my glasses are on the table, but that's okay. Um, so we're a 501c3, just a little background, 501c3 organization committed uh, to recognizing the fundamental rights of all children. We empower families and communities to make real and lasting change in the lives of orphaned and at-risk children through international special needs adoption grants and humanitarian initiatives. So, so the definition of an orphan, because I, that can kind of be a little bit, um, confusing or mis misread, but it's an orphan is a child under the age of 18 uh, who has lost one or both parents. The majority of orph orphans are cared for by a surviving grandparent, uh, parent, or another family member. But there's over 153 million orphans in the world. So uh, that's kind of an overwhelming number. I, I mean, I, I think it is. Um, so most orphans live uh, without food, clean water, education, a safe home, and basically without hope. So that's, you know, hence then Brittany's Hope. So Brittany's Hope provides, um, provides the humanitarian type services in terms of like food, money for food and education and things like that. We work with um, directly, we work in three different countries. Uh, we work in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Vietnam. So we vet the people we work with. We actually have two employees that live in Vietnam. Uh, so we, when, when we send money to Vietnam, we send money to them and they, and we know what it's going for, like every last dollar, we know what it's going for. So um, Mrs. N needs a home. Um, this $5,000 is gonna go there, they're gonna hire someone, and they will build her and her family a home. Uh, you know, this group of people needs food, this person needs a cow, so something like that, like every, it, like it's not, we're never sending money through government. In Kenya and Ethiopia, we typically work with Catholic sisters, we do work with Catholic sisters, and they, who have orphanages, and they're like, each orphanage, and the, uh, the people we work with are vetted, um, and we visit them. So it's never like uh, we send money to a charity in a country. So it's, it's really important. And then that trust um, is really important because you know. Another thing, um, 
a generous corporate sponsor being DAS, the company that started the organization, pays for 100% of our administrative costs. So that's, I've been in nonprofits for a long time. Um, and so I have never been able to say this about where I work. So, you know, it's, it is um, salaries. So Rachel and I are basically employees of DAS, not exactly of Brittany's Hope. So we're like on their payroll and then administrative costs like uh, the building and everything else. So we don't pay, when, when we raise money, everything that we raise goes directly to help the kids, the orphan and abandoned children. So that is, you know, it's a fantastic thing to be able to say. Oh, this is you. My turn. <laughs> I am going to talk about our program that started to be up with the adoption program. Um, so to now to become a part of Brittany Hope's adoption plan, the parents have to work with one of our affiliate agencies. We have, I believe, about 10 agencies that we work with across the world. Um, it's not just in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Vietnam. Our agencies work um, across the world. And so they have to be always connected with them. So that way we can just pour money right into them. It has to be an international adoption um, because we're trying to expand the world and help those who are overseas come over. And it has to be children designated with special needs. Now, that name might be a little bit misinterpreted. The way Brittany Hope defines special needs is age, disability, given group, or at risk. So any child that's five or older will fall under our age category because they're less desirable to adopt because they're no longer a baby. Anyone with either a physical or mental disability is also less desirable, so then they will fall under. Sibling group is anyone that is more than one kid. It's hard when you're a first-time parent to want to adopt more than one child internationally, so we try to help them with that. And then anyone who's at risk, so they might not have an issue right now, but they're at more of a risk to having an issue. Um, we try to help those kids so that way they can have the best future. Um, these are our stats for 2021 and for how um, the time we have been open. We have awarded over $7.7 million in adoption grants in 2000, and we have brought home almost 15,000 kids since 2000. Uh, we work um, in affiliate countries, so our affiliate, affiliate agencies work in different countries, and in total is 38, and 42 kids came home in 2021 during the pandemic. And then the reason I'm talking about this and what we kind of briefly mentioned before is I'm actually one of the first that was adopted through the Whitney Hill program. And so it's been running for, uh, let's see, I'm 22. <laughs> so it's been running for about 21 years now. And so it's really cool now that I'm back and working here to see how many kids that me got. Now, cool. Yeah. Oh, pretty. Yeah. <laughs> so, if, and if I can just like t talk a little bit more about Rachel. So, um, without maybe tearing up. <laughs> so, we just hired. Uh, she was. Uh, she graduated early, um, as Jeff mentioned, from the University of Valley Forge. So, in December, um, she, like, obviously has some some issues. So, so her yeah. arms were yeah, and. Right. Um, and you tell me, right? Yeah, so I was born with only half a tongue, so they're kind of, not so how I speak, but let's just say I have a really loud family. <laughs> so I figured it out pretty quickly. <laughs> so, um, you, you know, when, and, and I have a, a daughter with special needs, she has Noonan syndrome, she needed heart surgery right away. Um, you also have heart surgery, but no, you didn't need it. No, you didn't need it. They, they, they tell. That's right. Um, but, you know, in the United States, you know, you have a kid with special needs and people take care of you. You know, basically, the government takes care of you. If, like, if Courtney, my youngest, was born in Vietnam, for instance, like, we would have been shunned as a family because, like, oh, what did you do wrong that you had a child with special needs? So, like, that's terrible. Um, and, you know, I look at my daughter and, you know, she's, um, 
you know, she has her little issues, but you know, she's been the bright spot of our family. And then you look at Rachel and like the potential. So Rachel is our creative coordinator. So everything, like the newsletter that's on your, that's on the table, she did. You know, this whole, the slide thing she did, she uses nothing, no other like adaptive equipment. She, you know, types faster, she does everything. And like, it's, you know, it just blows your way. So I don't know if you can, um, if, if ever I'm having a day where I'm like, you know, like this is important work, <laughs> you know, I know, I know it's really important work because there's so much potential. My Lynn Saad, who is our, um, I think many, I think most of you know her, she was, you know, one of the Abel family's uh, adopted children, and she was adopted when she was nine, and she would have basically aged out of the program um, in, in a few years, and if you can imagine, you're a young girl in Vietnam, you age out of the program, you're on the streets, you know, life is, um, you know, you do what you need to do to survive, and most of them end up as prostitutes, basically. So it's like, and she has her master's in social work, and she is, you know, executive director of Brittany's Hope. So uh, the the potential in in the kids is is incredible, and you know, I think a lot of us, you know, most most people here, you know, know that like every life is worth living, but you know, it's just not that true. It's just not the case everywhere else. So. Um, you know, it's it's pretty phenomenal and you know you guys are an international group and you know that's fantastic so a lot of things that we do a lot of a lot of organizations aren't international you know and they don't have a, a glo more global mindset so it's um, it's it's phenomenal because we do have there's a lot of help here uh, for people but not not so much in other places so anyway um, so yeah I just been impactful for me. So the humanitarian issues that, uh, initiatives that we provide, me, this side. Um, as I said, you know, so we work in Vietnam, Kenya, and Ethiopia. We work with designated orphanages there, um, and you know we know the kids that are there. Uh, we FaceTime and Zoom and everything, and you know, and we know who they are and visit them. It's so fun. I'm I'm really new. So like, I don't know all the kids yet, so like, I'll be working on your project, and one of them will walk into my office and be like, I know exactly what kid I is, and it's like the funny thing, because I'll be just so, like, hours about these kids. <laughs> yeah, because cause our coworkers, yeah, I started in November, um, you started in March, March. Yeah, yeah, so, um, and, you know, the, so the people who have had the opportunity before COVID to go over and actually, you know, visit Vietnam and, and um, and Kenya and Ethiopia, like, you know, they do, like, we get attached, so it's very cool. So we have child sponsorships. I have, we have a sign there, that, you know, sponsor a child, like, that's a, an easy, no, I shouldn't say it's an easy thing, it's a great commitment, um, but it is one way to have a, a true impact on someone's life. You know, you pick a, who you want to support, and, um, and you pay per month, and again, everything is, is accounted for. You get letters from them, and um, you know can follow them through college. And you have kids whose lives uh, really could have been um, almost thrown away. And you know they're attorneys and priests, and you know and like you know have have careers that you know that are impactful, and and um, they're earning a living wage. Oh, so again, three hundred and thirty-five. Um, yeah, so again, and basically what I just said, so the child sponsorships provide medical care, education, food, water, shelter, clothing, um, and, and the loving care to help a child grow and prosper that we kind of tend to take for granted. Uh, family support. Um, there's, there's kind of a misconception that when kids are orphans that their family doesn't really want them, and sometimes that's not the case at all. It's just that they can't afford to like have a house for them or provide food or you know money for an education. So while while our whole goal is to help kids, sometimes we realize that the best way to do that is to provide like family enterprise grants. So um, if this if this family needs like a cart, um, instead of making a dollar a week they can make $40 a week because they can haul things for neighbors, then, then they're self-sufficient, 
then the family can stay together and you know and everything works <laughs> um, they sometimes it's a cow or um, a brood of chickens you know so it's just and and because we have people like on the ground floor in these areas we know like this person needs this and and then sometimes it's a house um, and we've gotten into the house building house builds not us but we provide the funding for um, for a, a construction company in each area and they're between five and six thousand dollars and it can mean the difference between a family saying I'm sorry I can't take care of my child I have to give them to an orphanage to we have a house and they can stay with us so and like you know here of course housing prices are through the roof you know that's a huge commitment but five or six thousand dollars and that can be transformational you know basically for generations Um, so, I just want to make sure where we are on time, good. Um, so, uh, so how can you help? So, um, as I said, a lot of, um, Brittany's Hope realized that, that we needed to do special events to get the word out because, you know, sometimes we don't always, like, grants tend to be local and, you know, and it's, you know, the money has to be used here. So. We started doing special events, probably you're familiar with them, but the next, the, the one that we have coming up the soonest is uh, Biking for Brittany on July 17th. So that is going to be, that's on a Sunday, so Sunday, July 17th. It starts at the Star Barn. It, there are two levels. We have um, a metric century, which is 62 miles, a metric half century, which is 31 miles, um, and they both take different routes. So if you are a, a cyclist and want to join, that's fantastic. There's a lot of rest stops along the way. We have a committee that's planning it that are very experienced. They've done and planned hundreds of rides. So uh, it's, it's a way for us to get our name out to a whole different community. I don't know if any of you are cyclists, but it is a group of people that do rides like they do them all the time and it's it's fantastic. So um, I know some of you live at Masonic Homes. The course starts out right through Masonic Homes. So uh, one way to, another way to support is to go out and cheer that morning, you know, that would be great. We have a number of volunteer opportunities and I know you guys are like the most incredible volunteers, but we need help at rest stops. So if people want to do that and say like, hey, I can do a couple hours on a Sunday morning at a rest stop, that would be fantastic. Um, and then we have, so that one's coming up right on, yeah, right on July 17th. Just let us know if you're interested in that. Um, and then we have the Walk of Love coming up in September. Um, that's September 10th, yeah. Um, and that is one that we have done. It was a celebration of adoption, really, at first, is how it started. And, we bring everyone back again to the Star Barn, and um, you know any families that are local enough can do this walk of love. So we get a lot of corporate sponsors for it as well. Then we have, of course, Christmas at the Star Barn, and um, and then we'll have Brittany's Ball. If any of you have attended that, it's also at the Star Barn, and that'll be coming up um, on April first of twenty three. So, um, yeah, so. So there's links to give. If anyone wants to put, pick up their phone and, uh, and scan that, that's a way, way to do it. We're at biking, I mean, we're at brittanyshope.com.org. I think both work, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, that's another way. Okay. <laughs> um, so now, really, we can, um, we can open it up. If you have any questions about anything, 